Hello and welcome to this edition of Crossover. I'm Xi Xiaojun. Hello from Beijing. I'm Louis Lee. I'm holding a cushion today. <laughs> I know it has some special <laughs> no, no effect. I want to have this cushion <laughs> to cover my belly. <laughs> Don't this. We have actually a special theme. This is、um, from some、uh, online novels, and、yeah. uh, what does it say?、Uh, bring back、um, my you husband. You translated. Bring back my domestic husband. Is that what no, it means? No, no. What is a national? It's on.、Um, bring back a husband, husband who is loved by the whole country. Oh, <laughs>、like、I see. Okay. Like a national okay. icon. Oh, right. So.、Uh, Probably that's why you know. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to talk about online literature and what is online literature. How many years are we into that business, and why people are now so keen in online literature? We're basically talking about the boom of the online literature here do, in do, China. Do you read novels online at all? No, I don't. I like to actually. You don't read, read at all.、No. I, I do, I do, but I like to read from my paperback. Maybe I'm more traditional that yeah, way. Yeah, we have a few though on the table. Yeah, but these are these pure. <laughs> are these really? Well, the print copy of online novels. Yeah, these are actually from online first, and then they were later adapted into paperbacks. Well, they're thick. Yeah. Is that the Japanese one or? This is. I think this is a translation. This is a Japanese translation. They have a translated version. Yeah, that means it's really popular. Of a Chinese online literature. Yeah. Interesting. It almost looks like a comic book, right? So it says over 30 million. Wow. What is what is DL? Anyway,、mm, yeah. that's what we're going to talk about today. Joining us today here are three special guests. We have Jeremy.、Hi. Jeremy is a translator translating online novels in Singapore. Yes. We have Dr. Chen from the Academy of、uh, Social Sciences in China, and your research, I guess, online literature. Yes. All <laughs> <laughs> right. And、uh, we have、uh, Liu Yuan. Yep. And you are the product manager of China Literature. Yes, right. So do you publish a lot of this? Well, I'm not publishing. Actually, I'm working on an international program. I、oh. think China literature as a huge, you know, China literature giant group. <laughs> you do serious business, not something online. We do both. <laughs> <laughs> so you agree with me? This is not something serious. Well, we're working for the entertainment, and also we're working for the serious contents as well. So the question is, what is online literature? Yeah, what, what exactly is online literature? I know it's the model is, is quite different here in China. Can you tell us about the development of online literature here in China? Literally, you can put anything online, and、yeah. so you can write anything online. That's literature. If you fictional, <laughs> like poetry, what <laughs> do you call that? The on- online literature,、um, but. Well, the, the the definition seem to consolidate into something that is、um, written online first. Whether we don't count whether it、ah. it is published online or、uh, offline or not. To me personally, it's about serialization. So you will be reading it daily、uh, for new chapters, bit, bits of it, and then you can also. It depends on how the author、uh, writes it, such that、mm. it gives you that hook which you want to like keep reading the next day. So does this like、um, habit? If you put the literature works online, that would be the online literature.、Yeah. Basically, the online literature includes like what I mentioned. So we do the entertainment stuff, right?、Mm. If you write up the fictional stories and put it online for the readers, that's one part of the online literature. And if you put the uh, publishing uh, works contents and、uh, put it through on the line, and it's also could be consider considered as a part of the online literature, literature too. You have to. Be careful when you say your definition, your version of the definition, your <laughs> understanding, because we're going to hear what your boss has to say. Online literature can be said to be a form of creation through the internet. In this process of creation, writers who create the content will be very rich. Due to the creative process and interaction between the writer and the reader, the content is more relatable to the writer and the reader. 所以内容上相对来说比较贴合于读者的本身，他们在这里面能够找到很多跟他们自己生活和兴趣共鸣的地方。同时的话呢，呃，通过互联网和移动互联网的方式，用户可以随时随地的阅读。呃，从大盘上来说的话，其实网络文学的读者非常丰富多彩。当然，现在来说的话，其实呃，整个用户群最广泛的还是九零后、呃，九五后这些非常年轻的一些年轻爱好者。他们对于网络文学的这个接受程度更高，其实而且对网络文学的一些题材和内容有更多的一些要求。He's the boss. Yes. He says it all. <laughs> yeah. So basically, online literature is closer actually to our lives, being loved by all these young people. It could be anything, 
And this year actually uh, is a big year. This is the 20th anniversary, officially mm. or not officially <laughs> recognized yeah. by the community mm -hmm. or by, by, by officials that this is the 20th anniversary mm. of Chinese online literature. 20 years ago, there was um, a novel, uh, if you translate it into English, literally, it was very popular, right? the first intimate communication, uh, a love story written yeah. by a, uh, a writer from Taiwan and mm. literally lit the fire of online reading at the time. Mm. At the time, it was still on, on PC, yeah. but the mm -hmm. story went viral. I, I heard of the book, but I actually, uh, online literature, but I actually never read it. Mm. Have you read it? I might. Yeah. I might have. Yes, I might have. I mean, is it addictive? Mm. I, I, you mentioned earlier. It's not it, a, it, a, a, it's a fake story like this, this thick. It's a, um, it's a simple story. It's about a love story. It's mm. a tragic. But the thing is, like you said earlier, novel is a novel a good story is a good story the only difference we're talking about here is whether it's offline a print copy or is online but i think the genres are quite different if it's online literature right mm. i mean if it's offline we don't see these kind of covers i mean i, I wouldn't <laughs> right i mean just from the cover alone you can tell the storyline is also different can you tell us a little bit about this online literature the genre of online literature basically we have a couple of different genres so, so uh as you can see, for the tra traditional industry, uh, in the Western world, we have the high fantasy stuff. But in the, in the, in, in the Eastern world, we usually have the, a martial arts, right? Huh. But, and Kung Fu. Yeah, mm -hmm. Kung Fu. <laughs> that is Wuxia. So huh. along with the time going, and we, the authors create a new kind of the genre, which is called Xuan uh, Huan and Xianxia. Basically, it means Eastern fantasy. Fantasy. Mm. Yeah, but with the Eastern back Illusion. cultural background. <laughs> yeah, it is. Eastern it fantasy, is. yeah. Mm. Yeah. Along with that going and we create more and more genres. Like uh, currently we do have thirteen major genres including the Eastern fantasy, Western fantasies, the gaming, uh, competitive sports and uh, some uh, realism stories like the uh, those fantasy plus the modern world life stories. Mm. And also we we have a uh, honor stories too. So basically we have everything. Yeah. Which ones are more popular, Doctor? Usually it is marketed as so as a, a female oriented um, section of, of online literature and mm. a male oriented. Uh, so um, what um, he has just told you, most of them are, are uh, male oriented <laughs> and female oriented that, that would be like romance. Romance. Um, all kinds of romance and, and um, doesn't really matter online, offline, so long yeah. as the love story. Yeah. Uh, yeah, love story sells. Yeah. Yeah. sells yeah. everywhere. Hear me on what's your opinion about this? Because you you're doing translation. Yeah. So what kind of online literature are you translating? So I'm doing like Eastern Fantasy, uh, so Xuan Huan and Xianxia. Uh, of course, I also do some of the modern genres, so it's more like contemporary. So there's this uh, huge range that, yeah. that, as a guy, I tend to like these kind of books. And there's of course the romance that uh, the girls like. <laughs> <laughs> how do you, how do you choose then? How do you decide which ones to translate? So the main point, is of course, is first read it, and then if you like it, you start. Hey, so I want your to personal preference. Yes, that's mine. Mm. And which turned out to be more popular among? Singapore readers. I believe it's uh, mostly the Eastern fantasy. Eastern yeah. fantasy, because we're kind of a connected in, 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 in culture. Is yeah. this Eastern fantasy? Yes, uh, yes it is. Is it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, all of them? Uh, not really. No, that's, that's romance. Yes. That's, that's romance. And what yeah. is this? Competitive that's sport? What is uh, it? This is mm. eSports. It's a gaming oh, gaming. Mm. Yep. Mm. I feel I'm too old. I don't yeah. understand that <laughs> <I> don't. <laughs> <laughs> The next question is, who are the writers? Who are writing these novels, the stories online? Well, basically, currently in Yuan uh, group, we do have close to 7 million authors already. So you can see that huge number, 7 million authors. Basically, I can see. Say that again? 7 million seven authors. Million 7 million, million authors. writers. Yeah. How many online readers do you have? I mean, what is the balance? <laughs> That's way more. That's way more. So basically, from right now, our MAU, the monthly active user, is close to uh, 190 million users. Already. 190 million, million users, right. active, active users, million active users, writers. monthly. Monthly. Yeah. So who who are they? What about the uh, the um, uh, you know the age range? Well, the age range is quite broad, from the 12 even to the 60. 60. <laughs> yeah. Do so they read the same novel? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, their their flavors and the preferences were definitely different. But like I said, we have a lot of 
authors to create very different genres and contents uh, for their own reader bases, which means we can fulfill their own diversified uh, yeah. reading needs. You it's have so much to choose from. Yeah, it's yeah. such a big database. And how do you let your work shine? Is it based on ratings? Is it based on reviews? Like, how does it work? It's a very uh, comprehensive work, basically. Yeah. So, as internally, we do have a very huge uh, editorial department, and uh, our editors will pick up those mo the most potential ones from the, those huge library, and they will pick up those potential ones and showing up with all the uh, recommendation spots through mm -hmm. our web website and uh, our apps, and our readers can easily to reach out those potential ones. And also, uh, for some uh, the metro authors who has already been build up their own fan base, they yeah. can just uh, create a new stories okay. very easily because they have a huge fan base already. See, if, it, if they create a new titles, there were like uh, thousands, even thousands of millions of fans who will follow up to check out, whoa, what's the new titles they're writing now? So it's, everything happens online? Yeah, everything happens online. So is it really it is rare that you would publish something, the physical copies of these online stories? Well, we, we, we do publish the contents online first, uh, afterwards. If the title is getting more popular, we will definitely try to publish in the physical book. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So again, Doctor, according to your research, who are the writers? Who are the uh, readers? I think for their case, that they have a huge company that is profiting from uh, online literature. Most of the writers will be like full-time writing, and they have to produce like at least three thousand words a day, and that that is a lot of work. Full-time full-time writers. Yeah, there are a lot of full-time writers, but they are also part-time writers. Mm -hmm. and especially the uh, part of the writers I research are like part-times. They do whatever they want. Okay. Just female writers, they, they write and they don't work for profit. There are all kinds of platforms. People can just publish on the, their blogs or mm. like uh, WeChat. Yeah. Um, channels. You just let your reader know where to find you and yeah. then that's uh, it. Is there a number, the readers, number of readers, how big is this population? I guess I've seen a number of sev uh, 378 million. That's a lot. Yes. That's one fourth. <laughs> Yeah. Nearly, mm -hmm. nearly one fourth of the total population yeah. in China. But we're talking about users, not necessarily individual people. But there's still a lot of users, and that is why this is now becoming uh, a, uh, a business, mm -hmm. an industry. Yes. I feel like it's almost like a revolution because you know, back in the days, if you want to have your book published, you have mm -hmm. to have good content. Mm -hmm. You have to go to a publishing house and get the book published. But nowadays, it's kind of like a reverse cycle where right. you get mm -hmm. to put your work online first. And then whether people like it or not, you know, it's, it's up to them to judge. And then if it does well, then you get to publish it. It's, reaching, almost, yeah. it's almost reaching different categories of readers. Mm -hmm. You're getting out to the online readers first mm -hmm. and to have a test run. Mm -hmm. And exactly. then you go uh, to the print copy. So you bring see. down the cost because you don't yeah. actually have to publish the book. So Jeremy, uh, your readers, when they read your, your, your novels, translated ones, uh, when do they read your novels? Um, so they can be reading on like the commute to work or school, mm. on um, subways. Yeah. yeah, or maybe like just before sleeping. Yeah, so stuff with like a mobile phone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's how we see how uh, many people the <laughs> on the reading. phones all the time. Yeah, yeah. is that going to wake you up or is it going to help you sleep? <laughs> I guess you it depends what kind of genre. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah, but um, if it is a fantasy story, then it's yeah. going mm -hmm. to uh, get you even more awakening. Yeah, yeah. But who are the readers? Um, so they can be, usually they are, for like Eastern fantasy, they are probably uh, the teenagers to maybe like early 20s, adults, uh, working adults, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Until 60? <laughs> I'm not sure about <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm not sure, sure there will always that. be some. But yeah. Do you get also feedbacks from your readers? Yes, because like there's always comments. So you can see like, sometimes you can receive like thousands of comments. So are you also like one of the online writers that you translate online, you publish your works online, or do you work with any publishing houses? Um, so yeah, I'm working with Web Novel, which is uh, one of the subsidiaries of China Literature. Mm. Yeah. So you're paid to do that? To do that. Yes. Okay. That's a new, new yeah. career now. Yeah. <laughs> what about the business model? Uh, what is it like? Because um, we do have a figure, the total revenue of online literature in China for each year mm -hmm. is about 2.5 uh, billion. 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 U.S. dollars. U.S. dollars. That 
Is that a huge yeah. number? Well, for me, it is. Yeah, it is. A huge it's definitely number, a huge right? number, right? I thought so. How do they make money? What is the uh, you know the way of business? Yeah. So from the past, I, I mean, in the 15 years ago, and uh, our company just uh, created a new business model, which we call is pay for really in chapter basis. So basically, it means people need to pay. Uh, a couple of cents to unlock a chapter to read the contents uh, and subscribe. So, uh, it's kind of the subscribe, but it's not like a membership or a pay the subs uh, okay. subscriptions monthly, right? They just uh, pay for a chapter basis. Mm -hmm. They buy one chapter or two <laughs> chapters. <laughs> yes, they do. You can buy only one chapter. Yes, they do. So I'm going to divide my one chapter yeah. into ten. <laughs> How, How like many <laughs> chapters do they usually write? I mean, I, I, I look yeah. online. It's a huge book. I, yeah, I yeah. feel like the chapters go on and on and on. I mean. Definitely. See, it's a huge book. So, which yeah. means the web novel always, the online literature always yeah. have over a thousand chapters yeah. for the whole book, thousand to fifteen hundred. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. a lot. They have to be good. In music industry, you used to be sell. Uh, we used to sell a whole CD mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where there are maybe ten, eight sounds. Maybe there is only one favorite one. Yeah. yeah. But you're going to buy the whole CD to listen mm -hmm. to that favorite one. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Yeah. You, the old model, you have to buy the whole book. Mm -hmm. Probably, you know, the story it only becomes more beautiful in the end, but you have to buy the whole thing. And now it's a different model. How many chapters do they need to go before you make the decision, okay, I want to sign with this writer, or I want to publish a <laughs> book for the writer? Usually they only need uh, 100 chapters. 100 chapters. Uh, only around. 100 chapters. Only around. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're, if, you're, if you're thinking that it's a long story, right? It's over 1,000 chapters, 100 is only 1 of 10, so it's not so a huge number. <laughs> 100 <laughs> chapter, long or short, the 100 chapter, that's, that's like the, uh, the size. Actually, you can think of the uh, readers um, of internet literature as a curator that who reads a lot and choose from what he or she likes and then stick with it. Mm. So that uh, first 100 chapter is something for a taste. You need 100 chapters to yeah. have a taste of it? Oh, um, <laughs> well, you probably, probably, yes. In this yes. case, like, there's a feedback loop, like, um, mm, yeah. how you write, and then you, you can see your statistics, like, how many people are reading your books, mm -hmm. and then maybe once you write a certain plot, you, your people people might decide not to really read yours, and then you know that maybe I shouldn't do this, and so in some sense it's a self a feedback kind of thing. So you can mm -hmm. kind of test it yeah, out. Yeah, you can and test out things. This chapter people don't like yeah. it. You can try right. a different way mm -hmm. the next yeah. chapter. Right. Sounds like you're also writing. <laughs> <laughs> you? uh, I am trying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, kind, what kind of genre are you writing? Uh, I haven't really planned yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's still a secret. Yeah. It's still <laughs> a secret. So the um. The uh, social networking, the communication between the writers, the authors, and the readers, that's a very crucial part Definitely. in online literature. Yeah, it is. They always do the communicate with each other because the, uh, the reader's feedback is very important for the whole storyline. And uh, as I said, the web novel, the online li literature is much longer than the traditional ones. Then they have a the lot of rooms to optimize the whole storyline. Mm. And uh, the authors will read the comments uh, for each chapter, and they will know what kind of elements that readers are really the needs. Afterwards, they will try their best to put those elements into so the story. So they would consider their comments and feedbacks and put it into mm. their next yeah. chapter. But then, at the same time, as a writer, shouldn't you be writing based on your own ideas and based on your own creativity? I mean, then you're gathering all these ideas from other people. They need to fulfill their own needs, their writing needs, and also they need to fulfill readers, their reading mm -hmm. needs. So you have to balance other people's needs and your own desire uh, in, in some sense. And, and there are people that don't write for, for profits and they don't care what people think. The authors that can actually mm -hmm. make this balance are the ones that actually uh, thrive in this online literature uh, yeah. industry. Yeah. I mean, if you write for fun, you are your own master. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And then if the story is successful, being liked by so many people, the novel can be a TV series, mm -hmm. a film, a video game. I guess this is, you know, what, what is happening these days. Okay, let's, um, let's take a break and then we'll continue our discussion after a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the studio. Mm. And earlier we talked about how this online literature in China is really gaining momentum. Yeah. Now, I'm just wondering what happens when these authors 
you know, they garner a huge fan base. What happens then? They become rich. And then what? They, they publish, become rich. They, they publish books. <laughs> no, that's before they become rich. <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, probably they can have their novels published in a print copy, yes. and they can have their stories adapted into films, you know, TV series, and that happens yes, these yes. days in China. Also, uh, maybe into video games. Is that what is going on here? Well, yeah, that's what that, that that's what is uh, happening at this moment, basically. Mm -hmm. So. What do we call this IP, IP adaptations, right? So uh, that's a whole ecosystem we have already built. So from the upstream to the downstreams, we all parties has already been engaged. Like the authors can just focus on their writings. They just provide a better, qual better quality of the contents, and the readers just just enjoy their uh, Reading. readings mm. and pay, <laughs> right? And afterwards, once the titles been getting much more popular, our platform will help all the authors to. to build up their long-term development plan and to help them to uh, develop their own IPs from the papers into the movies, uh, gaming stuff. But if you go away from your own platform, is mm -hmm. that the practice common in the whole industry? I think we are just a bridge in between those parties around this industry. We help authors to approach those uh, capitals, to approach those producing content studios, to, to, to help them to grow up the whole IPs from uh, uh, from a fixed value into an infinity value in the long run. Mm. Um, yeah. Out of these books, are we seeing any adaptations of films or yeah. w which one? I mean, we have this, right? We have Actually, this both of them. <laughs> oh, these two? Yeah. Into Already. films yeah. or? Well, this or one, the film is, uh, is preparing. Okay. And for this one, we have the comic, we have the translated novels, and also we have the animes. Yeah. Animations and animations. films and TV series and is already happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As for the animations, we have already achieved over billion views wow. on the online uh, okay. view for a story of one billion one billion it seems it's impossible in real world with a print <laughs> copy to right. reach one billion readers and only for, for one any season novel. according to your research is that a common practice that you know you, you you write a story online publish them attract enough viewership and then you have them adapted into different forms different genres is that a common practice with other countries too no it's Typical Chinese, very Chinese. It's very Chinese because the the internet literature or online literature, how do you call it? It's it's a very Chinese phenomenon. How come it's Chinese? I mean, internet is universal. Because you have paperbacks everywhere. You have a paperback genre fiction writing industry in the United States, and you can go into a airport and you can find paperbacks everywhere in the in the um, grocery stores, stores yeah. and mm. bookstores. But in China, we, we didn't have it until the... Um, we have bookstores. <laughs> we have bookstores, but we don't have genre fiction. So you don't have a paperback to take onto the airplane um, before this You're type You're saying of our bookstores do not sell novels? What? They don't sell this kind of novel. Oh, mm. this kind of novels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> genre genre yeah. novels, genre stories. I guess it's a bit different, like in the US you have like the Game of Thrones, so they go from a book to adaptation. TV series. Mm. Yeah, because in China online literature is a lot bigger, so uh, it, that's why you see this difference where in the US you use like, you go from books to adaptations, mm -hmm. but in, the, in China it's going from online literature to adaptations. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's similar, but it's just a bit different. If you go back to the earlier question, why this is being adapted into film? Because there are capital. Capital, capital pushing. Capital pushes. Yes, there are like media industry trying to get profit from what is emerging in such a big scale. You mean them? Yes. <laughs> the media people probably. I think they are more of the platform. But capital is pushing because yes. they see the potential for, for profits. Yes. So capital is after, always after mm -hmm. profits, and yeah. they see profits, the room for that. Yeah. Yeah. I think capital is only one reason. Uh, basically, the f online literature is really good for the IP adaptations because, you know, the fan base, are, fan base yeah. has already been built up, right? So, which means the investment risk is really lower if you compare with low the risk. others. Low risk. Definitely. Mm -hmm. It's the lowest one. Other thing is the fan base is over there. Once, you, once the adaptations project are getting through the marketing phase, you can reduce a lot of margin, uh, market budget on that phase. Mm. Yeah. How about the quality of the adaptation of films? And I and think the quality is getting better and better. 
along with the along with the industry development because from the upstream to the downstream all parties be engaged they will understand how to allocate those investment and, re and the resources and where they should put money in. So in the long run I do believe the quality of work even better than our ima imaginations. But in the very beginning, in the very first stage, I do believe the people's preferences were always choose the novels instead of the adaptations because the novels, the wordings has unlimited uh, imaginations, imaginations mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, uh, you can also translate the, the films. Uh, there are people already doing that. Yeah. And I believe there's a, like, a positive cycle in this where uh, people who have never read the novel, they watch the adaptation, they decide, hey, I, I want to read the novel. Mm. And people who read the novel, they were like, I want to see like, uh, maybe my cr this character mm -hmm. in real life form or in some uh, animation. So they go and watch the, the adaptation. So in some sense, it creates this uh, nice positive feedback loop. Now, you're, you, uh, it depends on the marketing people. When they watch the movie and they say, hey, the book is better. <laughs> when you read the book, hey, we have the film. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's more lively. <laughs> So in Singapore, readers, your readers, are they more Chinese Singaporean or uh, non-Chinese Singaporean? I think they are more Chinese Singaporean, but there's probably a mix. Yeah. yeah. And they're reading Chinese online literature as well? Yeah. Mm. So the translations, uh, they can either read the translations or they can read the original Chinese. How, how big is that market in Singapore? Uh, it's probably a few million? Probably not that yeah, That's the population. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty yeah, very tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but still, I mean, in Singapore, that's a huge number. I can understand overseas Chinese falling in love with online literature. This is based, pretty much based in Chinese culture. Mm -hmm. Whatever fantasy we may call it, it's based in Chinese culture roots. But at the same time, we're also noticing Chinese stories, fantasy stories, mm -hmm. online literature getting popular among Western readers. Yeah. You see that too. One part of the answer is a uh, Chinese cultural flavor. Of, um, people get interested in martial arts and things like that all we the time. We have Bruce Lee. <laughs> yeah, of yeah. course. And we have Jackie Chan. Also. Yeah. yeah. We, we, um, I I taught a course of martial arts films uh, in the United States, and I found that the students have seen more martial arts films than I did. So so they get interested in the other cultures. Also, um, some of the earliest novels that was translated into English were not Chinese, specifically Chinese themed. They're mm. easier to access because uh, except the some part of the Chinese flavor, they also have this um, fantasy that people can get used to with Western fantasy. Mm. So that's, there are some elements that they can also easily relate it to. Another marvel. <laughs> yeah, something the like that. Chinese version of Marvel all kind of combined into a Chinese fantasy story. Kind of Chinese Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the, the storyline could be quite complicated if it's, you know, it's Chinese themed. Um, as a Westerner, would they be able to understand it? I mean, how do you bridge that gap between Western culture and Eastern culture? Hey, Jeremy, Jeremy <laughs> you have to explain this. Yeah. So um, in, um, in the Chinese context, there are a few terms that I can't even explain it in a clear way. Mm -hmm. What yeah. it means in plain language, like Jianghu. Mm -hmm. What is <laughs> what is Jianghu? So uh, there's <laughs> one translation that you call it the pugilistic world, which is where people like act uh, chivalrously and basically you are in it as like a family kind of thing. So it's it's really hard to translate that. But people slowly they get like after mm -hmm. they get exposed mm -hmm. to it a lot of times they they start to realize this concept of uh, Jianghu. So, so you, you, you can try to explain it in translated notes uh, and slowly they get uh, used to these kind of uh, terms. So, but Jianghui is just one example, but yeah. do you also come across many terms that might not be that easily understandable to your non-Chinese origin readers? Yeah, so, so in the beginning there's definitely some uh, barriers, uh, but I guess like the story is usually uh, more attractive that they, they can actually like Try to ignore that part. Ignore that part. <laughs> and, and in the process, they actually uh, yeah. get adapted to this kind of uh, new terms, and then they get uh, they get exposed to this. And yeah. so it's not really that a uh, big problem. What kind of genres do they like in the West uh, when it comes to Chinese online literature? I think it's literature. the same. Like, like we like romance, we like comedy. So these these aspects are still 
so quite universal that mm. uh, both that's why also mm. why Westerners like it. Um, but I guess it also has to do with how because it's online literature, so the authors have to really time their pacing properly, mm -hmm. and so it has like cliffhangers and stuff like this, keep the readers like uh, uh, attracted to it. Mm. So I guess that's one of the 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 the, the benefits of this. Mm. So doctor said is right. The culture absolutely is one major thing, but I think there is a couple of different uh, steps be involved. So one thing I do believe is the people has a universe general reading demands. Mm -hmm. That's how the story is being built up. So every single story will be followed up with some of the fundamental mm -hmm. uh, elements and all the all the skills. For the mainstream of the of the storyline will be always the same. People are always looking for the peace and love. People are always looking for the comedy, looking for the romance, and people are always looking for the family. You don't see cultural gap in that. I God. do. Well, the <laughs> cultural gap is always there, but cultural gap is only for those added elements. Like in the Western world, people might put it nice and um, mage elements into the story. But in the Eastern world, probably we will put those wuxia, like jianghu, or we put the cultivation cultures into Eastern novels. Is it really that easy to just translate like a novel and just bring it there and or online literature? Uh, I can see not every single book can be perfectly translated uh, in between two languages. And so, uh, except the translation, we do also put a lot of efforts on the, tra on the novel selections. We mm. do select and we do reveal what kind of stories we, sh we should really to pick it up. So if the some titles might be too much Eastern cultures and might be with too much Chinese like the, the slang or with the Chinese uh, local cultures like the, those so-called comedy parts, we might, we, we, we might ignore it because it's really it's, it's too hard for the, to the translators. You're nodding all the time, so yeah. do you agree with all these observations? Fundamental values are all the same, whether on the surface there are cultural differences or not. It is true that all types of fictional writings caters to humans' desires. There is something that can be universal. Mm. The emotions. It's all the mm -hmm. same. And like the aspects, mm. they are all the same. So it's something that hits your, your tears and hits mm. your body. If mm. that is the case, why it didn't happen to high literature before? It happened. It happened. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> it but happened. But one thing is that uh, is American people don't read foreign literature. Especially on the high level. Is it changing now? Um, I don't think so. You don't think so? Um, and English, in English, and probably some, some part of the U European countries mm. are more open to foreign literature, but in English-speaking countries, I don't think that is happening in the serious literature. But uh, for the um, like online literature, it's, it's more like the popular culture thing. That the different media scape. Okay. And so um, there are a lot of people getting a, a, accustomed to uh, East Asian flavored culture uh, contents like uh, Japanese anime and manga. And then they are also coming to Chinese internet literature mm. as well. Because it, it's also something of a new culture that is interesting that we can try to see just see whether we like it or not. This is um, the fun part of uh, online literature. It's all flexible and it is online. All right, um, let's take a break and when we come back, we'll continue our discussion. And for more information about Crossover, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the studio, and mm. we're here continuing our talks about yep. why Chinese online literature is getting so popular and so big also overseas. Well, it's great news, yeah. but the key question is, what does it mean? It's a really good chance to us to, to go in across the board because we can reach out uh, way larger popul populations around the world. And also, we can share our culture elements to different cultures. I mean, we're not going to break through all the cultural difference, but we're, what we're doing is to build up a bridge in between different cultures and 
uh, to reduce the uh, cultural entry barriers for each other. I do believe it is also a good chance for our, uh, our uh, Chinese authors because they have a, uh, a brand new market where they can get more uh, revenues and mm. also we build an new opportunities for the global authors. You're already thinking of the other way of the traffic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Jeremy, yeah. when you do publish your novel next time, mm -hmm. come back. <laughs> come back to the Chinese market. You're thinking of the possibility of yeah. a two-way traffic. Definitely. Yeah, you think, uh, is that possible? I think it's possible. And also because I think the, this is going to be uh, apply, applied to other part of the world. Yeah. You think this um, Chinese business model will work in the West? I mean, you mentioned that it's, you're starting to attract mm -hmm. um, writers to join this platform. Is it working? Right now, it's more subcultural and only a segment of population are interested in, in um, reading online literature this way. But we don't know. It, ha it may happen in the future. Mm -hmm. But you also have concerns, say, uh, starting from genres. It seems because you need to cater to diff the needs of the customers, and they want fantasy stories. Okay, I write fantasy stories. It's almost like, like Hollywood model. I have certain elements. This, I mm -hmm. have to have it. And then this too, and that too. You have to put everything together, and that's the novel which is going to sell online good news or bad news, Jeremy, since you're I a think, potential writer? I think it's a good thing. So it basically creates you that framework where you know what's, what's popular. But I think re what's really um, that's new in this content creation business is through the process. So how do you infuse your emotions? How do you invoke the emotions of your readers? And how do you make them uh, captivated by your story? So that's not something that a framework can actually do. So that's still something that's required by the author. Mm. And so having a framework doesn't mean that's a bad thing. So it's actually a good thing where you, you don't have to think so much about uh, how you should really develop the story and more about how, how you should write your story. Mm. But is there like a popular format? You know, like you said, mm. is there a format that is like a, you know, a, a success recipe where you have the main character who falls in love with this person, <laughs> came from a very sad background. Um, is there like a set format according to, to your observation? Well, uh, mm. how can I say, it's, it's not that simple. Yeah. There were absolutely some major elements we need to put up on the stories which can uh, definitely increase the pop, uh, popularities of the, of the particular title. But still, we, we also need to work hard on those fundamental elements uh, on the bottom line because those are the core stuff of, of the whole story. Mm. Afterwards, we can just uh, put up different elements into uh, onto the, onto the storyline. we're industrializing it, mm -hmm. then it is only possible in the future we need AI only technology to write a novel and that can include all the elements you want as a reader and put it in the, the story and then ban it's the uh, selling story. In the near future, no, I don't think it's happening. And it still involves a lot of uh, imagination creativity. and creativity. And also the, the, the market is unpredictable. There are always some of the surprise hits. And if you look at in the broader sense that people say that you can divide all kinds of um, love stories into two types, Gen Ire and uh, Pride and Prejudice, and just these two types. And that is possible, but that, like all stories have been told before. The, yeah. the only difficulty is to how to tell it again and make people love it. Mm. So it, that's a whole different story. So the story could be the same, but you just have to use a different formula. Different types of people, right. characters, and interactions, that You'll kind still, of thing. Um, you yeah. need the human touch in mm -hmm. the writing mm -hmm. yeah. of these novels. And sometimes it's not perfect, but mm -hmm. that's exactly mm -hmm. what sells, what touches mm -hmm. people's mm -hmm. heart. Yeah. Uh, there is another bigger issue. So if you write a book, I like it. Not so many people read it. And can just, uh, I can just copy your story yeah, and publish it. How about plagiarism? Is this an issue? Everything's online. You have so many books. You have so many writers mm. writing stories. You can be stealing from someone. You can, you know, it c they could have a good story. You can steal it from anyone. I think it's sort of the issues, absolutely. But what we are doing right now is we imp implemented a, an internal system which is searching all around our huge library 
into mm. the chapter basis with with searching all the contents with it and matching up if there were matching up all the contents see if the new sub, uh, submitted contents has already been uh, uh, violates any regulations internally if they reach the regulation parts and the certain contents were absolutely fair to accept. Mm -hmm. So I think that technology can also help us to do such things instead of just the, you see, the AI to create I new mean, stories. I mean, you can probably story. track a certain sentence that's been plagiarized, but mm -hmm. you probably cannot track like characters, personality, or mm -hmm. the plot of certain stories. To, to mm -hmm. right, you cannot track all that because we have mm -hmm. all this content on on your platform, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's that's. I think that's another that's another question. It's not a hundred percent plagiarism, right? It's something. It's, it's it's really hard to define what what is the plagiarism is. It is IPR. I started first, and that's my story. How come it's been published and included in your story? The reason is, as I said, the stories always be there. The fundamentals are always the same. Okay. So people just add different elements onto the button line, right? So if you are talking about the button line, are the basic stuffs. I mean, everyone has the same thing, right? So the only different, the only unique things are. The are, th are those elements above the bottom line. Is it the same thing, are the same rules and laws and regulations apply, uh, that apply to, say, to uh, right? paper, print copies, print books, mm -hmm. and online books? Are we talking about the same set of rules here? Yeah. I think so. What turned out to be in China is that the female-oriented market are more concerned with the idea of plagiarism because usually um, people write that for free and they don't write that for profit and then if then it gets plagiarized and then profited and people get really furious because I write it for love but you make it money and if uh, an author is accused of um, plagiarizing, uh, plagiarizing mm. and that's a huge issue. It's very communi community based of the def definition of plagiarism mm. <laughs> because as you said that in the, in the traditional copyright law, uh, at least in China, they protect uh, expressions, sentences, text. They don't protect ideas. They don't protect characters. Mm. And so that is enforced in the community. We don't read this p mm -hmm. person's book anymore. We don't like this person anymore. Just go away. We don't want to see you, but not in the law enforcement because it's okay. almost mm -hmm. impossible to enforce. Yeah, it's always different. I mean, uh, when it's offline, because right? yeah. with mm -hmm. online, uh, offline print copies, there's the book. This is, you know, I, I wrote this first and I can submit the yeah. original copy or file with online it's all online yeah it's, it's hard to prove <laughs> unless yeah. you yeah. double check say yeah this is you know, the, the date and time that i yeah. published yeah. Uh, published online right published yeah. online or that's yeah. when i keyed in all these words yeah. and if there is a data recording all this mm. uh, otherwise yeah and if it is an idea then it's even harder to track yeah. the yeah. origin that's a Again, that's the down, not yeah. the downside, but the different side mm. of online literature. Again, um, about the uh, the stories. I uh, in the end, I would like to invite you <laughs> in simple <laughs> languages and a few sentences. <laughs> give us a story that it might sell as an idea online. All right, the f I think probably we can just uh, start a sports channel, all right? So basically, mm -hmm. if you becoming a England Pro League club manager, and if you are reversed from the from today to the 1995, 1998, and then probably you will have the chance to to hire or to to coach to hire the David Beckham, right? And mm -hmm. you can invite him to join your own team to fight for you and fight for the championship. Nice. Yeah. You have a story? I don't. You don't? I can't think of one right now. So that is the time when we say this is the end <laughs> yeah. of this episode. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you very much for thank coming you. to Crossover and sharing your stories and insights with us. And thank you for watching this episode of Crossover. We'll see you next time. Bye. Read online literature. <laughs> <laughs>